हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम सुनील कुमार पीजीटी कॉमर्स केंद्रीय विद्यालय सेक्रेट आर के पुरम लेट मी टेक यू टू द सेकेंड एपिसोड ऑफ आर बिजनेस स्टडीज क्लास ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड इन आर लास्ट एपिसोड वी हैव फिनिश्ड द मीनिंग ऑफ मैनेजमेंट फीचर्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट एंड द नेचर ऑफ मैनेजमेंट वेदर मैनेजमेंट इज अ प्रोफेशन और नॉट नाउ इन दिस एपिसोड वी शेल स्टडी वेदर मैनेजमेंट इज एन आर्ट और नॉट बट बिफोर वी कंपेयर द फ्यूचर ऑफ आर्ट विद मैनेजमेंट वी नीड टू नो वॉट इज एन आर्ट एन आर्ट इज द स्किलफुल एंड पर्सनल एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एग्जिस्टिंग नॉलेज टू अचीव डिजायर्ड रिजल्ट इट हैज द फॉलोइंग बेसिक फीचर्स द फर्स्ट फीचर ऑफ आर्ट इज द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ थ्योरेटिकल नॉलेज आर्ट प्री सपोजेज द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ सर्टेन थ्योरेटिकल नॉलेज experts in their respective areas have derived certain principles which are applicable to a particular form of art now let we understand whether management is having this feature of art or not yes there is the existence of certain theoretical knowledge in the field of management it is also having various principles which are derived on experimentation an observation by the management experts the father of journal management mr henry fuel has given 14 most important principles of management which are applicable throughout the world the father of scientific management mr f w taylor has also propounded the principles in the field of management The principles of general management is applicable to all over the world in all the organizations but the principles given by Mr Taylor is applicable at the factory level only Now the persons who are passing out from the professional institutions they are getting the jobs in the various companies and they are giving solutions or you can say new solutions to the various problems which are arising in the business organizations the students of iims who are getting pg diploma in management they are getting the jobs in various companies not only in india but in multinational companies as well they have learned theoretical knowledge of management in iims but when actually the problem is coming when they are working as a manager they will be giving different solutions they must have learned everything same in the iims but when actual problem is coming the solution from each and every one would be the different one So yes the very first feature of art is very much present in the management the second feature of an art is personalized application every artist must possess personal skill and creativity to apply the theoretical knowledge of art the application and use of this knowledge varies from person to person as i mentioned earlier those who are joining as a managers they must have learned something theoretically in the professional organizations but now whatever problems they are facing the solution will be different altogether the solution which was best in the previous year may not be in this particular year because of the changed circumstances the world is ever changing so as the solutions so it's not like the best solution of the previous year will remain forever with changed circumstances we have to change accordingly The next feature is based on practice and creativity. All art is practical. An artist must interpret the theoretical knowledge and apply his own creativity to it. To achieve perfection, practice of the theoretical knowledge is necessary for an artist. If we compare this feature of art with the management, we will certainly find yes, the managers they are also having the practical problems when they are working in the organizations there may be problem in the production department in the finance department in the marketing department or even in the finance department one has to provide the best solution to these problems and management helps in completing and overcoming with all these problems so this feature of art is also available in management so now if we compare all the three features which are present in art with the management we will certainly find yes management is also having all the three principles of art so we can say that yes management is of course an art 
Students, we have understood whether management is an art or not. Now we need to understand what are the functions performed by the management. So management has five major functions to be performed. First is planning, then organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. Now, the first function performed by the management is planning. It means deciding in advance what to do, when to do, how to do, by whom it is to be done. Basically, in planning, we set the objectives of the business organization. And to provide the support services, we have to formulate the supportive plans. Then we have to search for the various alternative courses which are available in the market. After searching the alternatives, we have to analyze each and every alternative so that we can choose the best. And after comparing the cost analysis and profit analysis available in all the various alternative courses of action are to be chosen. So the best, which one would be the best? The best which is decreasing the cost and which is increasing the profits of the business organization. So once one alternative course of action is selected, the business has to implement it. And the moment it is implemented, it again we will go to the very first step of the planning, that is setting the standards. Because once we have set the standards, we may not end up with the target which we have set in earlier. The second function of management is organizing. To organize a business means to provide it with everything useful for the functioning. That is, the raw material, machines, money, tools, and all other human resources. We identify the different activities in the organization as financing, production, marketing, and personnel. Organizing helps in setting all the activities to the perfection. Organizing brings together physical, financial, and human resources, which ultimately helps in the attainment of organizational objectives. It is only organizing which is establishing the superior subordinate relationship. It is the one which is setting the hierarchy in an organization. If we have to understand the organizational structure, we need to understand the levels which we are having in the management. In the management, at the top level, we are having managing directors, board of directors. Then we are having production manager, finance manager, marketing manager, personal manager. And then we are having at the lower level of management, all the employees, supervisors, and the workers who are working in these different departments. Students, now let me have our next function of management, that is staffing. Staffing means putting the right person on the right job. It includes estimation of manpower requirements. It comprises of recruitment, selection, training, placement, and compensation. The first one is estimating manpower requirements. In every company, we have to see that in various departments, where are the vacancies? All the vacancies available in the different departments, like finance, marketing, production, and personnel. We have to see how many vacancies are there. These vacancies are to be advertised and the competent people from all over the country and from the abroad, they can apply for the jobs. Once the companies are getting the applications, the scrutiny will take place. And after that, those who are qualifying the educational experience and the professional qualifications, they will be called for the written test. Once the written test is conducted and those who are successful one, they will be called for the interview. And after interview, they will be sent for training so that from the very first day they will be able to perform what they want to perform in the organization. The business organization wants that each and every person who are joining the organization should give their best. They need to have all the information about the organization. They need to have all the information what type of work they have to provide, what type of task they have to perform in the organization. So in training, Whatever professional and other type of skills are required, these are being explored to the perfection. And from the very first day, the person will give his or her level best. And once the people have gone for the training, they will be coming with full of confidence and whatever task has been given to them, they will be performing it to the perfection from the very first day. As we have seen that in various companies, 
when the new people comes to the organization, they will find the environment is different altogether. They will be feeling comfortable in the organization as they are being paid sufficient amount of salaries and wages. They will be able to provide their level best to the organization. And when each and every person is working to their level best, certainly whatever goals or the objectives the organization has set in will certainly be able to meet those goals very, very easily. Now, our next function of management is directing. Directing refers to giving instructions to employees by motivating them, supervising their work, and communicating with them. It includes supervision, motivation, leadership, and communication. Now, let me discuss these in detail. Supervision is a combination of super plus vision. Super means over and above. Vision means to look at. So in an organization, one person has to give the job that he has to look at all the employees who are working in the organization. He has to see the activities performed by those workers. And if he finds a particular worker is not working properly, he has to issue certain instructions to him. He has to tell him how he can perform his task to the perfection. Now next is motivation. Motivation not a thing which can be forced on a particular person. It comes automatically from the inner side of the person. If a person is in need of money and if we provide a financial incentive to the person, the person will give more than 100% to get that financial reward. Similarly, if a person is having sufficient amount of money and if we ask him that if you work in particular way, you will be given more money, the person may not be motivated. But if we tell that in front of so many people, you will be praised, you will be appreciated. So that might motivate that particular person. So now it is very much clear. We cannot force motivation on a particular person, but it comes automatically from the inner side of the person. The next is leadership. In an organization, once the right person is put on the right job, we need to direct them. We need to guide them. We need to give them enough stimulus so that without getting tired they will be working for the success of the organization. A person in a company must be appointed for that particular cause who will be working as a mediator between the employees and the management and that is the personal manager. He will be taking all the problems of the lower level of management and will be circulating the same to the top level of management. And whatever solution top level of management is providing he communicates the same to the employees. In this way, a personal manager avoids any possible strike or lockout in the organization. Now, the last and the most important element of directing is communication. Without proper communication, whatever functions are earlier performed are useless. The middle level of management has to communicate with the employees in proper writing form, but in some cases in the oral form as well. If the organization is not having effective communication system, then certainly there will be the communication gap and because of which the employees will not be able to give their 100%. They will be fully confused that what they have to do in the organization and how they can contribute towards the success of the business organization. Now, the last and but the most important function of management is controlling. It means measurement of performance against the standards and correcting deviations to assure attainment of objectives according to plans. In controlling, basically what we have planned in planning, we have to ensure that the things are taking place in the same way. In planning function, we have set the cost of manufacturing of a product should be rupees 20. Now in controlling, we will see whether actually the cost of the product is 20 or not. If it is more than 20, the causes will be taken out and the corrective measures has to be adopted because in the next year, certainly whatever decisions went wrong in the previous year, in this year, management doesn't want that it should repeat once again. Now students, we have come to an end of the functions performed by the management. Now at last, 
Let me ask few questions from you. Question number one. Thinking of launching new collection of office wear by a garment manufacturing company comes under A. Organizing B. Staffing C. Planning or D. Controlling Question number two. Dividing the work in the company into purchasing, manufacturing, selling, storage comes under A. Organizing B. Staffing C. Planning or D. Controlling Question number three. Giving advertisement in newspaper inviting public to apply for the vacant post of manager in the organization comes under A. Organizing B. Staffing C. Planning or D. Controlling Now these are the three questions which I am giving to you and I would like to get the answer from your side in the next episode. In the first episode we have completed the meaning of management, features of management, nature of management, management as a profession and now in today's episode management as an art and the functions performed by the management. So after getting all these about the management you must be forming a very sound view about the management. You must apply yourself in the various ways of management like if you would like to do well in your exams certainly you will go for the very first function of management that is planning. You have to plan your activities how you have to study in the morning, daytime, evening or at night. You have to plan yourself. A plan cannot be a successful one for all the students. So you have to plan yourself according to your SWOT that is the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So with the help of these two episodes I hope that you have learned about the management and you will be applying the principles and the, all the concepts relating to management in your real life situations.